Uh, hey everyone, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> uh, thanks for attending my talk today. Uh, I'm going to discuss the state of mobile games in 2022, providing insights into how the global mobile games industry has evolved over the last few years, what the industry looks like in 2022, and the key trends shaping the market right now and into the future. Uh, I'll also be providing some insights as well into Turkey's mobile games market. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so a little bit uh, about me. So some of the boring stuff first. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm Craig Chapel. Uh, I'm the mobile insight strategist for EMEA and Games uh, at Sensor Tower. I keep an eye on uh, trends in the mobile gaming world. Write analysis for our blog on what's going on in the industry using market data from our platform. Previously, I've worked as the senior editor, um, uh, sorry, the senior editor for mobile games business website, uh, PocketGamer.biz, uh, as well as Nintendo of Europe and uh, Develop Magazine, uh, which is now called MTV Develop. Uh, as for Sensor Tower, so our platform leverages billions of data points to offer real-time analysis for millions of apps and thousands of publishers in all major countries and categories. We're kind of trusted by Fortune 100 companies, top research institutions, major news publications, and leading financial firms. Uh, we serve more than 500,000 mobile apps worldwide. Our tools include store intelligence, ad intelligence, users intelligence, we even have game intelligence now. Uh, you can find out more by visiting sensetower.com or contacting us directly. And not to miss out on all the MA activity, um, in May 2021, we also announced the acquisition of Pathmatics, which is a leader in the world of digital advertising intelligence and provides deep, actionable insights across the digital advertising ecosystem. But to the, uh, the, the important stuff that while you're here, um, so here's a quick overview of the agenda today. I'll be looking at the state of mobile games in 2022, Turkey's mobile uh, games market overview, and look at some key trends, and then we'll kind of round it all up uh, at the end. Yep, so first up, we'll look at the state of the global mobile games market in 2021. Uh, well, yeah. uh, also looking at top genres and top themes uh, in the US market. So first up, we'll look at global downloads. As you can see from this chart, there was a very notable increase in mobile game installs in 2020, particularly in Q1 and Q2 compared to the uh, previous quarters. So in 2020, uh, global mobile game installs rose by 33% year over year to 56.2 billion um, across the App Store and Google Play. April, which is really the height of the first wave of the global COVID-19 pandemic and lockdowns, was the biggest month for downloads, with the market generating about 5.4 billion installs. And during 2021, uh, the mobile games market saw a small decrease year over year of about 1%, so generating 55.6 billion installs worldwide. The reasons for this decline can be attributed to lockdowns lifting in many regions across the globe as well as the fact that many people have already installed games uh, they may still be playing today on their mobile devices. But despite this, new installs basically remained flat year over year, which is kind of impressive uh, given the outsized growth that we had uh, in 2020. Uh, so next we can look at revenue and see how it follows on uh, from downloads. So player spending grew significantly as well uh, during 2020, with revenue up by some 26.3% to a then record $79.7 billion. Uh, that's just in, in games. Um, that rise in spending continued into 2021 as well, with the global mobile games market generating $88.6 billion, which is a rise of about 11% year over year. And that was led by countries such as the US, Japan, China, uh, where we only track uh, the App Store as Google Play isn't available, and uh, South Korea. Uh, so while growth was slower than in 2020, 
Uh, it's still very much a growing industry uh, with more people than ever playing games on their mobile devices and spending in them. So we'll take a quick look at the most downloaded titles. Uh, we can see that uh, Garena's mobile shooter, Garena Free Fire, was the most downloaded uh, title worldwide in 2021, generating approximately 247 million installs from the App Store and Google Play. Among Us, uh, you may remember, <laughs> uh, 2020's most downloaded mobile title. Um, it's still, it's still uh, gaining a lot of installs, really. So it ranked number nine during the first half uh, uh, in, in 2021, sorry, uh, the full year, uh, picking up more than 148 million installs. Uh, one of the surprises looking at these charts is, to me, is that while hyper-casual games uh, continue to be popular, uh, and they do generate, as, as a genre, a crazy amount uh, of installs. Um, only three of those titles actually made the top 10 uh, most downloaded games of 2021. Uh, but overall, uh, Google Play took uh, the lion's share of global mobile games downloads in 2021, generating 46.8 billion installs, accounting for about 84.2% of all downloads. Um, they kind of they have a greater proliferation around the world and they have kind of a greater range of devices from the, the kind of top end to, to low end devices. Uh, so when it comes to uh, the top revenue generating games in 2021, the number one revenue generator was Tencent's PUBG Mobile, which picked up $2.9 billion across the App Store and Google Play globally. Uh, it narrowly came out on top over Honor of Kings, which generated approximately $2.8 billion. And that was largely just from China's App Store. Uh, worth noting that we don't track third-party Android stores, such as those in China. So really, these games are, uh, are, are generating even more revenue um, than, we, than we're even showing. Um, so analyzing just the top 10 overall revenue generators, we can see that six of these titles were published uh, by companies based in Asia, showing how lucrative Asia markets are, and in some cases, how global looking publishers like Tencent and MiHoYo have become. Uh, there's, uh, not quite shown here, uh, you can see it on the App Store revenue with Rise of Kingdoms and Lilith Games is another great example of a, a China-based publisher that is kind of looking globally with titles like Rise of Kingdoms and AFK Arena. Um, so, but while Google Play dominates downloads, uh, the App Store generated more from player spending, with titles on the marketplace accumulating $51.9 billion, or 58.6% of total mobile game revenue. Uh, so we can dive a little bit deeper. Um, so this is some research I did earlier this year. Um, and we can look at the top performing, top performing uh, genres. Uh, I did this for the US. Uh, and their growth year over year. So given 2020's outsized growth in downloads, uh, every single game genre saw a decline in installs year over year in 2021. The sports genre experienced the slowest decline with installs falling by 2.5% um, to about, uh, just over 141 million. As a casino genre, meanwhile, saw the steepest decline year over year, with installs falling by 39.3%, followed by a fall uh, in installs for shooter games. Perhaps the latter could be attributed, at least in part, to you know the bans on PUBG Mobile, which uh, was uh, which in India that was one of its kind of sorry there was there was a ban on PUBG Mobile in India for a while. And that was one of its largest markets for downloads. And then also uh, a while back, you had the removal of Fortnite from the app stores. Um, it should be noted that PUBG Mobile eventually returned as Battlegrounds Mobile in India. Um, but as expected, uh, Hyper Casual ranked number one for downloads last year in the US, generating uh, 1.6 billion downloads. Uh, the revenue chart shows almost the complete opposite of the trends we saw with downloads. So during 2021 in the US, nearly every, nearly every single game genre saw a rise in player spending year over year. 
action, which features titles such as Genshin Impact, uh, was the fastest growing genre, with players spending up by uh, approximately 69% year over year to just under $967 million. Puzzle, meanwhile, was the largest by player spending, generating $5.1 billion in 2021, in 2021 followed by Casino with $4.8 billion, and Strategy with $4.3 billion. Uh, $4.3 billion. Uh, I think what this shows is an increase in both new users and the engagement of existing players, even as, so, sorry, an increase in those, uh, even as much of the world kind of came out of uh, strict lockdowns. Uh, so this one, this one's kind of slightly strange, but I'll, I'll go into it quickly. But we so um, you can kind of dive in deeper into some of the market drivers here. Uh, we've also so we've taken a look at using game intelligence and our game taxonomy tools, um, and kind of look at the fastest growing themes. Uh, I'd make one big caveat here and say that some of the data here isn't necessarily indicative of wider market trends as growth could be driven by a single game. And that's the case with the fastest growing theme, which was animal insect. Uh, during 2021 uh, in the US, player spending saw approximately a 10 times increase year over year to 26.5 million, largely led by a game called The Ants Underground Kingdom, which generated nearly 90% of that player spending. Uh, the second fastest growing theme by revenue in 2021 was fashion, aesthetics, hair, uh, which saw a 3.7 times increase in player spending year over year to more than $307 million. Uh, this includes games like Project Makeover, uh, Covert Fashion and Super Stylish, and I think is much more indicative of an interesting industry trend. Um, the number one theme by player spending during 2021 was what we call money uh, slash treasure which includes titles such as Coin Master, uh, which generated $4.4 billion. And then that was followed by Empire Building at number two and Tabletop at number three. Sorry, I can't, uh, struggling to get to the next slide there. Uh, so next up, uh, we'll dive into some data on Turkey's uh, mobile games market specifically. So I'm not, I'm not just saying all this uh, just because we're at this conference, but it, it, I think it is really true. Um, and to be honest, the rise of Turkey's kind of games industry is no secret, uh, but it is worth noting just how big it has grown. Um, in some ways, the sector has turned, uh, it, it, in my eyes, uh, into its kind of its own Finland, doing what Finland did back when kind of Supercell and other uh, studios were emerging becoming a great hub of new and exciting startups, and it has its own big studios. Um, success includes the likes of Peak Games, Graham Games, Rollick, which are all acquired by uh, uh, Zynga, of course, as well as new studios like the Royal Match developer Dream Games. Um, such as the buzz and success found in Turkey, we're seeing those kind of big M&A deals and also those big investment deals, which I kind of noted some uh, on this slide. Uh, so some quick stats. So in, in 2021, according to our Sense Tower estimates, Toon Blast uh, ranked as the number 34 revenue generating mobile game in the world, uh, while Royal Match ranked number 20, uh, sorry, number 66, uh, Toy Blast 82, and Merge Dragons uh, 90. So, uh, and despite only launching in 2020, a uh, raw match, according to our estimates, has, has generated approximately $322 million from global uh, player spending to date. Uh, that's absolute Google Play. So, analyzing Turkey's uh, mobile games market, we can see that similar to global trends, installs for mobile games in Turkey rose sharply in 2020 by 35.5% year over year to 1.8 billion. However, it also broke uh, global trends in 2021 with mobile game installs increasing by 2.4% year over year to 1.9 billion uh, compared to the 1% worldwide decline that we saw. 
Uh, this could be attributed to different uh, timings for lockdowns. Uh, I believe there were strict restrictions enacted uh, in 2021. Player spending in Turkey's um, mobile games market rose by 56.5% year over year in 2020 to $362.7 million. And then in 2020, revenue grew at an even faster pace, uh, increasing by 70% year over year to uh, $616.5 million, uh, dollars, uh, with quarterly revenue picking in Q2 following Q1 spike in installs. Uh, and social restrictions. Um, player spending was led by the growth of titles such as PUBG Mobile and Garena Free Fire. So I've noticed I've said uh, uh, peaking in Q2. It did obviously initially, but then by the end of the year, it actually uh, by Q4, revenue was still higher. Uh, so just taking a very quick look at the most installed games. Uh, PUBG Mobile from Tencent uh, was the most downloaded mobile title in Turkey during 2021, picking up 9.6 million installs. Uh, the hit title was the country's uh, was also the country's most downloaded title uh, of 2021. Um, Hyper Casual ranked as the number one genre for downloads in 2021 in Turkey, picking up more than 500 uh, million installs. Google Play, meanwhile, accounted for the lion's share of mobile game installs in Turkey in 2021, accumulating 1.7 billion installs, or about 92% of total downloads. So Google Play very much dominant. And as with downloads, PUBG Mobile was the number one grossing mobile game in Turkey during 2021, generating approximately $118 million. Uh, shooter games ranked as the number one revenue revenue generating genre in turkey picking up 269.4 million dollars uh, last year accumulating sorry accounting for approximately 45 percent of all player spending and you can see from the chart here that revenue was really first led by as i said pubg mobile and followed by garena free fire and you can also see call of duty mobile there uh, so Google Play dominated both mobile game downloads and revenue in Turkey, generating uh, $527 million in 2021, which was about 85.5% uh, of all player spending. So again, uh, Google Play very much dominant over the App Store. Uh, so next up, we'll go through some of the key mobile game industry trends that we're seeing right now. Uh, so one of the, one of the things that I wanted to note was that uh, 2021 was obviously another uh, record year for mobile game revenue, as we've seen, uh, and that increase was uh, kind of in part powered by its top games, so eight mobile titles generated more than $1 billion uh, in 2021, uh, just just last year, um, which was up from the five that surpassed that landmark in 2020. Uh, so that included titles uh, PUBG Mobile, Honor of Kings, Genshin Impact, Roblox, Coin Master, Pokemon Go, Candy Crush Saga, and Garena Free Fire. Uh, I've noticed this on a global level. Um, I should know that all of our estimates as well uh, for player spending uh, are across the apps on Google Play. So again, not those uh, third-party Android stores. Um, but there were also other notable milestones, not just the games that generated $1 billion last year, but you know, Pokemon Go has surpassed $5 billion lifetime revenue. Brawl Stars hit $1 billion since launch. Genshin Impact accumulated $2 billion in just its first year. Uh, that's on the App Store, Google Play, and also doesn't count the other platforms it's available on. And then Ten Cents Honor of Kings uh, broke past ten billion dollars in lifetime player spending, and that's really largely tracked from well, our estimates really largely generated from China's App Store. Um, so yeah, it goes without saying, uh, mobile game is big business, big business, uh, and it's, it seems to be getting even bigger.
So this chart is from our new State of Mobile Game Monetization 2022 report put together by my colleague, uh, Francisco. Uh, so here we looked at the number of titles that utilize each monetization method and worked out the percentage of games by genre harnessing them. So here we can see that the ad-driven hyper-casual market is perhaps by no surprise, uh, the most common genre among titles that have implemented an ad removal uh, monetization option, accounting for 40% of these games. RPG and strategy account for a combined 42% of titles that have implemented a season pass. Um, the feature was initially popularized by Fortnite and then uh, the wider shooter market. And seven out of the top 10 revenue generating shooter titles worldwide now utilize this feature. Uh, while the majority of the top titles that have implemented a season pass are mid-core games, Casual titles have also started to add the feature, including Candy Crush Saga from King and Homescapes and Gardenscapes. Uh, you can find out more in our full game monetization report, uh, which also looks at some case studies of titles like the I've mentioned, uh, Gardenscapes, as well as Lords Mobile and Heyday, uh, which, saw, uh, which all saw a jump in revenue shortly after introducing a season pass system. Um, but yeah, there's a link to the report there. Uh, so if you want to take a screenshot or whatever, um, then uh, please feel free to do so. Um, so one big trend, clearly, that everyone's seeing is the rate of M&A activity and public listings. Um, you know, we've seen the likes of Zynga, Tencent Netties, and more recently, the massive blockbuster deals um, by Microsoft and Take-Two. Uh, really, among others, uh, making you know, just huge, big acquisitions, uh, investments, partnerships, you know, any anything to kind of uh, broaden, your, uh, you know, diversify, kind of get around, uh, or sorry, not get around, kind of protect yourself against IDFA or just getting into the mobile market in the first place. There's just so many reasons to kind of for all this activity, especially in a kind of a, a mature market. And it's actually been going on for a few years, but perhaps one of the catalysts was really the, the pandemic and lockdowns, which saw obviously a big surge in revenue and downloads in mobile games and seemingly uh, usage across, across uh, the games industry. Um, and we've also seen a few uh, companies go public uh, in the last couple of years, so, you know, big listings from Roblox, AppLovin, Playtika, and maybe we'll see more uh, in future. Uh, you can put your put your uh, predictions in the comments. Um, so I, I'm aware of the time, so I'll try and get through these last ones in a couple of minutes and leave some time for questions. But uh, a look at trends wouldn't really be complete without looking at uh, China and its increasing influence on the global games industry. It's the world's largest app store market for player spending, generating uh, about $15.2 billion during 2021. Um, Chinese publishers have worked on the world's biggest international hits, including PUBG Mobile, Genshin Impact, and Call of Duty Mobile. The latter, which was developed by Tencent's Timmy Studios in partnership with Activision. I think publishers in China perhaps kind of long struggled to find international success on homegrown titles, uh, but that's all changed in recent years. And, and add to that substantial M&A activity from Tencent and NetEase. Uh, and you can see just how much influence China has on the global industry. Um, for me, one of the most exciting trends uh, is the increasing number of titles going cross-platform. Fortnite made a big splash with this on mobile, the ability to play against your counterparts on other platforms. And it was a huge hit on smart devices, kind of making $1.2 billion on the App Store and Google Play, really most of that on the App Store. Um, before pr prior to its removal, uh, Roblox, meanwhile, another huge cross platform game, uh, becoming a multi billion dollar hit on mobile alone. And then you can see here we've also had Genshin Impact uh, and uh, Zynga's uh, launching uh, Star Wars Hunters on mobile and Nintendo Switch. Uh, perhaps controversially, we can uh, touch upon uh, uh, blockchain and NFTs, you know, love it or hate it. 
um, the, many developers and publishers are experimenting with it. Um, you know, there, and there's also been some big funding rounds from Sky Mavis and and Forte, and you know, obviously, Axie Infinity has been has been huge. Uh, and then you've got a publisher like Zynga appointing its own VP of blockchain. And very quickly, some stats here that we put in our monetization report. So we show that five of the top 10 most downloaded NFT and crypto games were released in 2021, showing that this is very much a nascent market. Uh, leading the pack is uh, Thetan Arena, which has accumulated uh, 10.7 million downloads to date. Again, actual Google Play. Uh, 7.7 .7 million of those uh, came in 2021. Uh, we've, uh, you can see some other titles that are a bit more historical there, like Mobile Legends. They've experimented somewhat um, with NFT. And very, uh, and then very quickly, just uh, just a nod to the metaverse. Obviously, we've seen you know concerts and uh, in, in film screenings and other various events that kind of aim to bring people together and do something outside of the core game, uh, Roblox and Fortnite kind of leading the way there. And then more recently, we've had uh, Facebook even changing its name to Meta um, for various reasons, one of those being to really signal its intention to build a metaverse. Um, you can come up with your own meanings, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, I think we'll see exactly what it looks like, maybe, well, who knows, five, 10 years. Um, and then see if that's where the market wants to move to. Um, so there's some key takeaways. Um, I won't go through them all, uh, but I just kind of finished by saying, you know, really, despite the challenges uh, that the world of the mobile games market has faced, the success of uh, the sector uh, continues to, uh, to thrive globally. And so just want to say uh, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed hope you enjoyed the talk today. If you have any questions or just want to get in touch, uh, you can reach out to me at craig.chapel at sensortower.com or you can uh, hit me up on LinkedIn. And if you're interested in the Sensor Tower platform, you can contact our sales team at sales at sensortower.com. You can also visit our website sensortower.com <laughs> to discover more about the platform and to find uh, industry insights on our blog so thanks very much and i'll stop saying sensortower.com um but yeah we've got some time for some quick questions which i can see uh, in the chat so one second what do you think the mobile game genre of the future will be well that's that's a really interesting question um i mean i to be honest i don't think there's a mobile game genre of the future you know um I'm, I'm hoping, i hope i'm understanding your question correctly you know but we we do see like people playing across a broad spectrum of genres that that's what's great about mobile and great about kind of the modern mobile games market is that you know i think for a long time people just thought it was kind of simple casual puzzle games like a candy crush um but now you you can you can play those and those are amazing and now you also have well, from a long time ago, but you know, you had your Clash of Clans, and more recently, the games are even getting bigger. So you've got uh, you know, AAA uh, like experiences, PUBG Mobile, uh, Garena Free Fire, and now you've even got your, your Genshin Impact, and they're all a variety of different genres. Um, I guess you know, shooter was once not that popular on mobile, and then it became popular. Re more recent times, we've had kind of the merge genre kind of grow. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe merge will grow bigger, you know. But it's, you've you've also got kind of your winners kind of emerging there. Um, in terms of other genres, I'm not really sure, but uh, it'll be kind of exciting to see, and uh, maybe maybe we'll see some of those kind of mechanics emerge, perhaps from hyper casual. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. And uh, another question: Do you think there'll be a decline in mobile game popularity? due to an increase in play to earn and nft gaming popularity so the, the i think the thing with the new emerging market is it doesn't it, it really depends how it kind of folds out on mobile obviously at the moment 
uh, the apps are on Google Play kind of restricted, so you you won't see that many of those kind of games that are just focused largely on NFTs because Apple and Google, and and it may be rightly, but it, it, it kind of, you know, want to make their money and with nfts is there a way for them to do that and also mobile games as free to play as it stands is a massive market and that will not disappear overnight so you can have these things live side by side um one doesn't necessarily mean it destroys the other <laughs> in my uh, in my opinion um but it'll be interesting to see uh, where NFT games kind of finds their big audience is it just is it going to be through the web browser? Can they can they be on the mobile app stores? Um, where will that platform be that's best for them? Um, a decline? Uh, who knows? I, I just think uh, that regardless, it will mobile will stay a massive market for free to play. Uh, so we've got another question. So with the growing popularity of concepts like play to earn NFT and blockchain, what cha kind of changes do you predict in, in genres? When and how can major mobile game studios participate in this trend? I, I think, as I said, really, it's, it's, you know, I think there's obviously a shift going on and there's a lot of developers, publishers that are really interested in exploring the NFT space. There will still be room for traditional free to play. Remember, it's, a, it's it's an incredibly highly lucrative market. You know, I know I noted that Honor of Kings, mostly from China's app store, surpassed uh, ten million dollars. Again, not including Android, uh, sorry, third party Android uh, stores. Genshin Impact's on mobile alone, um, two billion dollars in its first year, and these all come from you know season pass systems, gacha monetization. So there's kind of plenty of innovation that's gone on and perhaps will continue in kind of standard free to play without blockchain. Predict I can't really I don't I can't really predict uh, changes in genres. Obviously, it's completely completely different kind of gameplay styles because you're you're probably playing for it's play to earn in, in these examples. So you're kind of playing for a different reason. But I think it'll be interesting to see how that actually again folds out. You know. The current the current implementations of NFT and crypto might not be the implementations that are used tomorrow. Uh, when and how can major studios participate? I mean, I guess you can just they can do it right now, right? <laughs> uh, the kind of the point of blockchain is anyone can kind of do it. Um, but yeah, major ones are already doing it. The, the real major block for mobile is is just uh, the reg rules and regulations of an app store marketplace. Um, but yeah. That's uh, so. That's the question. So again, thank you very much. And uh, again, you can hit me up on my email, or you can uh, um, get in touch with me on LinkedIn. So yeah, thanks very much, and bye everyone.